Good morning, uh, good morning again, everybody, and welcome to this uh, uh, first session, uh, technical session, morning session. We will have five papers. As you've seen, uh, we are we, we are lagging uh, of uh, five minutes, which is uh, I would say good, with uh, due to the technical difficulties, uh, and so. Let's give the uh, podium, uh, virtual podium, uh, to Professor Thomas Parisini, uh, who incidentally is uh, our president-elect of the Control System Society. And he will talk about on-fast multi-shot COVID-19 intervention for post-lockdown mitigation. This is a joint work with a lot of uh, different uh, souls uh, and people uh, working on uh, on uh, our field. So, Thomas, please, uh, you can start. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. So, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, thank Fabrizio for organizing this uh, beautiful event. I think it's really interesting and and extremely well organized. I had no doubt before, but it is. Um, so uh, you already uh, mentioned the title and the uh, and the uh, authorship. I'm not going to read it, of course. Um, I would I'd like to start just uh, with um, a disclaimer. Okay, so everybody in this group is not an epidemiologist. Okay, so. Uh, so we are not pretending to um, to be correct in our uh, in behavior and and the like, and and the validation we provided was uh, a validation done on very elementary um, mass action SIR like models, and, and in particular we chose one. Uh, but clearly, these models uh, are models, and therefore, they they kind of describe the qualitative behavior of the epidemic, and which is very different from using them or using the values that you get from the model to make conclusions. Of course, and and in system and control, we all well know this. So. Um, let me put our our work a little bit into the context. Okay, so um, we are trying to uh, work on a post-lockdown mitigation, non-medical strategy. So, and, and, and the reason for that is uh, we are already seeing that, uh, and it, it's obvious to some extent, but the lockdown, which is, of course, is necessary to have a lockdown, okay, it's, uh, you, you cannot avoid that. Okay, but the social, especially the social, but the economic effects as well are terrible. Okay, and they have an impact on society as well. And there are many reports that are shown in the in the literature already, in the internet, and so on. And I just picked one diagram that is it, it, it is really amazing in in, in in giving a snapshot of that of, of what that will mean uh, in terms of the impact on our society. Um, and then, so um, the lockdown, as I said, is needed. Okay, so it's needed, it's necessary to abate the number of infected people. But long term lockdown is not sustainable, okay, for the reason that I already pointed out. Moreover, and last but not least, let me say there is a very significant risk of a new epidemic wave. Okay, at the moment, there is nothing that says that this will not happen. Okay, and I would like to mention because it was it was said by the previous talk, which I very much liked, uh, that uh, if you have seen what uh, uh, Professor Crisani from the University of Padova just said, you know you may know that he's conducting a very interesting experiment because he's working in this little town, um, in uh, it's in the Venice region. Okay, that was one. Uh, that was the first, actually, uh, community where very much people were infected in that part of Italy. 
And now it basically is closed, okay? Nobody's going out on a voluntary basis. And these uh, people are tested continuously, okay? And, uh, and these tests up to now are not showing any evidence that herd immunity will be achieved. There is no evidence at the moment, okay? And therefore, we don't know what's going on once the lockdown will be, uh, will be um, how to say, will be closed. Therefore, um, we do think that there is a need for strategies to handle, to manage the post-lockdown phase that are robust, effective, and especially have to be easy to implement. And, okay, several exit strategies are currently considered. I'm not going to deal with those, okay? There are many, okay? Mm -hmm. So you, you can read a few of them here that go from a driven intermittent lockdown to one-shot intervention, even immunity passports and things like that. Okay, but I'm not going to talk about that also because I'm not that expert in this. And, and there is no clarity at the moment anyway. And how about the models? Okay, so we know that there are several models and there are, will be many described here at this workshop. And these models basically serve to describe the qualitative behavior of the epidemics. Okay, even if you tune the parameters on the covid 19 you have, you have a number of issues, okay, that were mentioned already also in some question before. So the undetected cases, okay, the people that died, the time-varying parameters, geographical differences, and time delays, okay? And we as control people know very well, for example, what time delay means and the effect that it has on any control strategy. There will be a talk by Casella later on that will deal with that in a very nice way. Okay, so here is the point. Feedback and timing. So several governments are, as I wrote there, considering intermittent lockdown intervention driven by measurements. There are several studies already. Okay, of course these are studies, these are proposals, so they might be criticized. Okay, but for example, in the very recent, I think it was published four or five days ago, the paper by Kistler and others in the they are the Harvard uh, Harvard School of Public Health is published on science and they are also considering kind of solution like that. What is the problem? There are two main problems here. The first is timing. So the intervention effectiveness very much depend when the application is, and so and and then the right timing is very uncertain. And, la and second, the problem of feedback, as it is, as will be highlighted by uh, Casella later on, uh, observation are highly uncertain, they are delayed, and therefore closing feedback loop there is very critical, okay? And of course, these problems are very much exacerbated by the virus having an exponential growth and a long incubation period. So what is our proposal? So this acronym that I am, I don't know whether you see the mouse here, but this acronym FPSP is an abbreviation for fast periodic switching policy. Okay, let me try to give an idea on how that might work. Okay, so the basic uh, degree of freedom is the period of the switching and the duty cycle. Okay, and here is a very simple diagram that show what, what shows what I mean. Okay. So suppose that you have the two phases, okay, normal, normal life, okay, and complete lockdown, okay, and you, and, you, uh, uh, and you denote the length of the normal period, okay, as X and the um, length of the, uh, of the uh, lockdown period as Y, okay, and we consider a fixed period, okay, which is, e of course, is equal to X plus Y, and the duty cycle has the obvious definition, okay? And, and then you repeat that, and at some point, but at, the, but at the very slow rate, you may, you may change the duty cycle, but you are not changing the frequency, okay? And here, um, you, uh, I have a, um, a, a one simulation just that serves to illustrate what I mean, okay? This simulation is done using uh, Giulia Giordano, Patrizio, Franco, and the Siddhartha model, okay? And 
here you have three phases, the initial phase where the infection grows unbounded, okay? Then at some point where the red line is, you start the lockdown. And when the number of infected goes below some threshold that you decide, which is also important, then you start to activate this uh, this, uh, uh, switching policy, okay? And you see that actually from this simulation, you see that it might work, okay? So let me now go a little bit deeper into this, okay? So what is this policy, basically? So let's consider the uh, what we call the basic reproductive number. It was mentioned already, and it's mentioned by everybody, basis, basically. Even Angela Merkel mentioned this R0 in one of her last talks, okay? So this is the basic reproductive number, okay? And we can think of having a higher value when there is lockdown and a smaller value when there is lockdown okay so what is the main finding when we try to apply our uh, high frequency switching policy the fact is that the duty cycle actually defines allow you to shape an average reproductive number that is uh, belonging to the interval between r0 minus and r0 plus and the frequency controls the distance between the epidemic controlled by the by this switching strategy from a virtual epidemic that you may desire to have, okay? And that has a constant reproductive number equal to R0 star. That is the finding. Let me first show an example, and then I, I will go a little bit on the theory. Okay, so suppose you take an SIQR model, okay? We took actually the one that was tuned on COVID by, uh, by uh, some um, authors uh, at the University of Harvard. And suppose we take the R0 plus at pretty high number, 2.78, and R0 minus is a pretty low one, okay? And here you see the behavior when you apply these policies that have a fixed duty cycle, which is around the 14%, okay? And you see what happens when you change the frequency, okay? And you see, of course, you have the switching oscillation, but you see that you basically converge to the one where you don't switch and you use the average R0, okay? Here, I should have uh, wrote R0 here uh, as, um, as, as the R0 star, okay? And these, in this specific case, that where you tune this duty cycle in this way, you see that you get a, let's say, a desired average value of 0 0.76 that brings, using this model, brings the infection to basically vanish. Okay. A little bit of theory. We are control people and we like to, to try to provide some theoretical background to our findings. Okay, so we uh, designed, we not designed, sorry, we defined a general, pretty general class of epi epidemic model, or this SIR-like model can be cast into this form, okay? And here you see that the beta i, which is what typically is called in this model, the rate of effective contacts between infected and susceptible individuals, is what we call the control variable. Uh, there is a caveat here. When we say it's a control variable, I mean, is the control variable that we use when we validate our strategy using one of these models, okay? In reality, the control variable is the frequency and the duty cycle, so it's very simple to apply, okay? But when you have to validate your simulation using this model, then this control variable becomes this beta r. We do have a number of results. I, I have to apologize because here I just copied and pasted. I don't pretend you to, uh, to, to follow up on that, but let me focus on the result we actually found. Okay, the first result we found is that we can actually bound the distance between the actual dynamics, okay, using one of these models, and the average one, where the average one is defined, as I said before, by the duty cycle. And you see that the upper bound yeah, that is uh, expressing in terms of the sum of these three terms here, is basically taking into account, taking into consideration the basic elements we are interested in. As I said, the norm of the distance of, of the initial state of the infection, which is a very important parameter, as we know, 
okay, the frequency where I, as to how we switch, and the distance between these beta i that we actually use to control the, 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 the epidemic using one of these models, and the distance between the desired average beta i star. Okay? And the second corollary we can give is that also we can give some, uh, uh, some, um, some convergence result, and the convergence is nice, is a nice, is nice because it's a uniform convergence over every compact interval to X star, which is the desired average dynamics. So then, let me write these findings in a more easy to read way, okay? So basically, this theoretical background tells you, tell us that as the switching frequency grows to infinity, the dynamics of our model, the star is this class of models that I defined before, we converge to the dynamics, to the average dynamics. Okay, where beta i star is the time average of the control variable, which is basically controlled via the duty cycle. And that yields an R0, which is less than 1. Hence, with this strategy, we have the potential to try to shape the dynamics of the epidemic after a lockdown. Okay? And also, this quantity P and A that I, that I showed here, okay, these two quantities here, this quantity decreases as the switching frequency increase, okay? And hence, we are theoretically quantifying the distance, as I was saying before, from the average desired dynamics. Okay, then, that was a uh, open loop strategy. So we basically decided the frequency pretty high, we decide, decided duty cycle, and we just applied. There is no feedback in that open loop strategy, by definition of open loop, from any measurement. So this strategy doesn't suffer, in principle, from uncertainty and delay. Then, we propose to add a very slow outer supervisory loop, um, where we choose at the highest possible frequency that we want to apply, that might depend also on practical aspects and so on in society, and then we apply a very classical hysteresis-based control where we design a performance index that kind of waits over the past time window, delayed and uncertain observation, and in a very slow way, we basically decide which duty cycle to use. Okay, so... Our approach has one basic feature. Frequency and duty cycle are selected independently, so the frequency is fixed a priori, a priori to the highest possible value considering practical aspects, for example, and it's open loop. And then we slowly adapt the duty cycle using this outer supervisor. And the decoupling, feedback, and frequency selection concept allow us to use fast switch. Let me now go quickly on the validation. We validate that uh, uh, proposal on the Siddhartha model. This is a beautiful model that is developed by our friend Julia Franco and, and Patrizio and so on. And it has just appeared in Nature Medicine. Okay? We, we also did other validation on other uh, SI, SIR-like mass action models, uh, such as, for example, the SIQR, and also a fully stochastic SEIR type model that also incorporates realistic demographic stochasticity and serial interval distribution. They are not discussed here because of, of, of lack of time, um, but the result we got are basically, basically the same, let me say, to the one that we got with the Siddhartha model in qualitative term. Let me go fast now in order to try to keep on the time. So in this diagram, I'm showing the, um, the effect of the application of our proposed uh, strategy. And here you see, here is, as I said, it's applied on the Siddhartha model. Here on the left, you see the, uh, the, diag the behavior when you increase the period, so you decrease the frequency of the peak infected. Okay? And for example, this yellow, I mean, are are basically related to peak in of infection that, of course, are not sustainable, but they are related to very high values of the duty cycle. 
So as, as far as for a fixed frequency, you decrease the duty cycle, then you decrease the peak, you, you push forward the peak of the peak time that you see on the right, and in this middle diagram, you can, I don't know whether you can appreciate, but when, when the duty cycle goes to a small value, you basically have no peaks at all, okay? And, and you can get to a, a kind of a, uh, of a monotone decrease of the infection. So there is a good message here. Uh, we also did a more comprehensive study. I, I not have time to describe it. Okay, you can find it that in the report that is in archive. The only thing is that in this a diagram we show a pretty extensive, um, how to say, simulation result where we took many different values of the duty cycle, many different values of the period, and the colors of the two regions here have the meaning of trying to connect. On the on the left you have the peak values, on the right you have the. Uh, the peak time, so you try to connect the two. But the good thing that I would like to mention here is that the good region, the good region is basically here, for example, and this is actually the region where the outer feedback loop, the supervisory slow loop, actually drive your duty cycle. And this is shown here in this diagram, okay, that I think it's pretty easy to understand. So here we are showing what the outer feedback loop actually does. So you see that you have different values of the period here, and you have different, um, different values of the duty cycle, and you see the convergence that you get and the duty cycle convergence that you get. The important fact to observe is that this outer feedback loop actually starts very gently. So once you start to activate it, you start it with zero duty cycle, and it slowly converges to a good duty cycle, let me say. But the important thing is that doing so, you have no peaks at all. Okay, so this gentle, uh, gentle, let's say, action of the outer supervisory loop has this nice feature of not having any peak, actually, when, when you apply it. Okay. Uh, I'm close to finish, uh, Fabrizio, sorry to be late. Um, so here are a few findings that you may want to read. So for equal period, higher duty cycle yields smaller peaks, and higher frequency for equal duty cycle lead also to smaller peaks, okay? The policy can be implemented uh, via this outer feedback that is very slow, and it basically filters out the delays and the uncertainty, at least this is what we saw in the simulation. And, and the other thing that I already mentioned is the outer loop always converts to a feasible and good, to some extent, um, a fast periodic switching policy. So, it seems that from this initial work, okay, with the disclaimer that I said at the beginning, that fast switching between two societal modes appears to be effective as a one possible non-medical mitigation strategy after a lockdown. This policy may allow a very predictable uh, strategy, let me say, X day on, X day off, and periods are multiple of seven days, and you can get some, albeit reduced economic activity, Okay, and I think I already mentioned the last point. Uh, of course, this is not something that is pushing away all the other strategy. This, we see that not necessarily as a standalone policy, but we see it as a possibility that can be used to augment and complement other post-lockdown strategies that are actually, some of them are just listed here, but there are many others. They were also mentioned in, uh, in, the, in the initial plenary talk. Uh, and that's basically conclude my presentation. We have a version of the report which is available over archive, and uh, we are a big group, and we are more than happy to uh, take questions now, or if you prefer later on, if we are uh, bad with the timing, and I apologize for that, and thank you. Thank you very much. So, okay, uh, we have a, 
I would go for some questions if uh, if uh, there are questions. I don't care if we if we slide with the time a little bit. We we will shorten a little bit the lunch uh, break. So, do we have any questions, uh, Martina? Yes, we have a question from Alessandro Rizzo. Alessandro, please. Yeah. Uh, hi, Thomas. Uh, I think it's a great work. I liked it a lot. Um, and maybe I missed the point. I'm not sure. Um, is your concept of fast switching related to any typical time scale of uh, the illness or of the human activities? I mean, how fast? When you say fast? Uh, when I say fast, I mean that, for example, you might consider a, uh, a duty cycle of two days of work and five days at home, for example. So when I say, f you cannot go faster than that, probably, okay? And, yeah, that's what, uh, that's that's what was my concern. Sense, okay? But if you look uh, at the, uh, for example, at some of the simulations that I showed before, you see that, for example, a good strategy is one that has a period of 14 days, okay? And, 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 and you see, for example, the, uh, the policies that you get with the outer feedback using that. Okay, so for example, this simulation, uh, of course, the outer feedback, uh, we consider the minimum period for the outer feedback to be 14 days at least. Okay, because, because we have the 14 days incubation, you, as uh, usual, two weeks uh, uh, period. And, and there is a delay that we want to cope with, okay? Yeah. So when you construct your switching strategy uh, and you, you kind of drive it by the outer feedback loop, you, you need to be very slow in doing that and considering the, the, the delay. If I, if I may, I want to take an analogy. So suppose that you want to close a loop on a power electronics device, okay? And for example, you have unbalanced three-phase loads, okay? And basically, you close this loop using the, um, for example, the 50 hertz frequency, and you compute, for example, the, uh, the duty cycles there, and you compute, uh, for example, the, uh, how to say, uh, the usual uh, V square, I square of the current, right? And therefore, you need at least a the 50 hertz things, which is much, yeah. much slower than what you get with uh, the, that, that the switching frequency of your power electronics, of course. But you cannot use, you cannot switch that frequency of the power electronics using feedback because the feedback is much lower. Okay? So basically, the concept is not that dissimilar. Okay? It's kind of having a two, a two rate system. Okay? And, uh, and from our initial simulation and from some theoretical results, it seems that we have robustness here. Of course, keep in mind the initial caveats, okay? Yeah, sure. So the validation is done on this category of models. In our opinion, these are only telling you something about the qualitative behavior, okay? So, uh, and we cannot use these numbers directly to do anything as they are now, okay? Uh, and that is, is our understanding. Uh, on, uh, on the other hand, we are working on providing some optimality measurements here because uh, we would like to consider the possibility of kind of taking control of the social cost of social distances forever, for, for example, okay? And, and these are important, okay? And, and a, a lockdown of, let's say, uh, of six months uh, is not sustainable uh, in, in our society, okay? And, uh, and therefore, uh, we need to, at least we need to buy some time uh, for a back, okay? And, and, and using strategies like okay. that could, Thank, could be a good point. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. May, maybe a, a quick question by Bob, and then, and then uh, we close. Bob, are you there? Yeah, yeah thank you, Fabrizio. Yeah. Thanks, Thomas. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, just a, a question or an, an observation is that uh, there's no requirement. Your, your analysis is really a per-person analysis. And if you were to use uh, the same limit cycles in the same periods but different phases for different groups, then presumably you would get the same result. 
and that might be a, a, a more uh, utile suggestion in terms of use of infrastructure and those sorts of things. Right. Yeah, good point. No. Good point. So thanks again, uh, uh, Thomas. It was really interesting. Uh, Thank you. I, I, I would like. Okay, <laughs> I'm the only one uh, applauding. Yeah, yeah, nobody wants to clap. Yeah, let let moment. me also clap, uh, clap <laughs> like that. Okay, perfect.